Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel, inching closer to the opening bounce of the AFL season. In this video, I guess it's time to start talking about what is the solution to the Jack Silvani injury and the hole that that will leave on the list or in the team. And I wanted to get your thoughts as well and see where your minds went to. I think this is a question that will require, I don't know if it will, will require creativity, but, and the reason why I say that is because there are a lot of options. You know, initially you take, I don't know, 24, 48 hours to process it. It's a journey for Jack now. It's a journey that he will need to go back and, uh, and almost start again and tick boxes one by one, one foot in front of the other. It's a pain in the ass, but such is life. I learned that in the early 90s, Steve Silvani also had done an ACL uh, and he had to go back and, and go through the same process. I was speaking to Johnny Holden and, and he informed me about that as well. So for Jack, we'll start with Jack. Look, it's when I look at all the players on our list who have done ACLs and, and come back from them, they've always come back more... I think astute is the word, a little bit more settled, a lot more confident within themselves. And they've, all, they've learned more about the process of something. You know, Sam Doherty, who went through two. Caleb Marchbank, who's gone through a, you know, a, a bout of injuries, some really serious ones. Zach Williams was obviously the recent one. You can sort of see the steely resolve. I, I had met Zach when he had done his calf. And then I'd also spoken to him a couple of months ago, uh, towards the back end of 2023, I should say. And I could tell a real difference in the resolve in his eyes and the determination. And I think it's going to be a blessing for Jack, even though right now it's hard to see that. I think it's been a blessing to some extent for all the guys who have done them. And that's not to say that I would wish an ACL injury on anyone, but it's just more about, you know, life chooses, it doesn't, doesn't matter what you want. When something needs to happen to you, it happens. So for Jack, he'll go back and do his thing. I think stepping away from the field and seeing the game from the coach's box or wherever he's going to be watching the games, I think it'll allow him to explore the game a bit more in a way that he would not have had the opportunity to do so otherwise. So I'm pretty confident in when Jack does come back, we're going to have a guy who is going to be a better player for it, even though he hasn't played. I think he will become more of a student of the game. So we park that to one side. Then we look at, okay, what are the options? Well, to be honest, the list is in a, in a way now set up where we do have options and we do have depth. I think having done, it's quite ironic. Like it's, it's funny that we were doing the best 22 exercise and particularly in that forward line, I mean, I had Jack in my best 22. I thought this was a year where he would you know, lock down himself in the side, be that key position player for us in the forward line and, and that third tall option, if you will, uh, who can pinch hit in the ruck. I think the versatility is the thing that we will miss the most, but it's not something that we can't cover. So there are so many options. My mind, honestly, went to Elijah Hollands. Now, he's not the same player as Jack Silvani, I don't think he needs to be. I'm also really curious to see what the club will do if they go in, if they go externally or they just go internally. Now, I watched Pommy's video. Uh, he mentioned a couple of names. Bryn Tickle was in there. Um, he also mentioned McMahon, who's in our reserve side, who has obviously been around the system, been around the club for some time now. So their options are there. I tend to lean more within. I think we have everything we need within. And maybe we use that list spot to plug another hole for the future that Nick Austin can foresee that might need plugging or might need a little bit more depth uh, over the course of the year. So Elijah Hollands for me is the one that stands out. I really wanted to get him into my forward line for that best 22. I think you know, we've spoken about his motivation. We just watched his interview with Christian Filippo on the Summer Sessions podcast. And he just has, it's, he's ready. You just get the feeling that he's ready to turn a new 
leaf in his life, in his footy career, and, and really get cracking. So I'm really excited by the prospect of what he's going to do. And for me, that's the, that's, that's the really the first choice for me. Then you start thinking there was a guy that I didn't even mention in the forwards uh, in my best seven, and that was Lockie Fogarty. Uh, he's a guy that can – he is versatile in that. He can play in the midfield. He can play forward. I think all of our options are those types. Dave Cunningham is one. It's quite interesting that a couple of years ago we were all saying if he was fit and healthy, he's definitely in our best 22. We got to finally see him in 2023, and to be honest, he looked like he was in our best 22. Probably fell away a little bit at the very end of the season, likely due to the fact that he didn't really have the ideal preparation. So if I understand it correctly, Dave Cunningham's doing the preseason right now. So he's another option who's been in the system, who's, you know, desperate to get back into playing consistent footy. Uh, Ashton Moy is the other one. Uh, I haven't watched much of him, so I, I probably don't have as much of a lean towards him. I tend to lean back a little bit with the first and second year players just because I feel like you just got to give them some time and space. I've probably I've been guilty in the past of putting too much pressure on these kids early on. Uh, not to say that Ashton wouldn't be capable, but I just feel like it's probably more of a prospect later in the year than early in the year. I really do think it's going to come from that group of Elijah Hollands, Dave Cunningham, Fogarty, you know, always, which brings me to the next point. Do we then become a forward line where you've got, you know, Harry, Charlie, Jack Martin, I think those are your three first choice. Then you've got your smalls, in, you know, Motlop, and then is it Dirt and Owies? Do you play three those three small guys with Jack Martin, Harry, and Charlie, and, and Doherty? Not sure. I think no matter what happens, we are going to have an extra rotation on ball. We're going to have a bit better running power. I think we will lose some marking ability and some pressure that we got from Jack Silvani, but what we will gain is, I think, some running power and some more options around the ground when we sometimes we can look like we get clogged up depending on the defensive scheme that we come up against. And I think it just provides more running options. And I also think it's going to provide more space for Harry and Charlie to operate, you know, within the 50 meter arc or in, within the forward line. So it's not all doom and gloom by any means. It's sad for Jack, but to be honest, this is footy. It happens every year. And when someone gets hurt, someone gets an opportunity and there are a number of players on the list who are, you know, screaming out for opportunity. You look at, I mean, Harry Lemmy, is he ready to start playing football? That'd be interesting. Uh, I think what we'll see is in the practice matches, that's what we'll see, you know, who they're going to experiment with. I think it'll be very interesting to see if they replace him on the list with somebody, whether it's external, internal what position that player is, because I think that'll give us a bit of insight into how valuable Jack's role is. I, to be honest, I felt like Jack's role wasn't 100% defined other than Jack was a utility and could do whatever we needed whenever we needed him to do it as such. So do they really want to pursue having three tools? We'll see. Do they want to have a bit more of a, uh, what's the word, uh, a dynamic forward line where you've got your two established tools and then you just put smaller guys around them that can space the ground, hit targets around them. That's the, the thing I'll be looking at, the replacement, the position that the replacement plays uh, and, and what's valuable. I guess what you invest in is what you deem to be valuable. So that's what I'm going to be looking out for. But as I said, my first instinct goes to Elijah Hollands and Dave Cunningham, and Fogarty, these types. So guys who have played football, guys who we know can play football at uh, AFL level uh, and at a really high level as well, who can add pressure. Because one thing I think Jack's strength is, is his pressure. Uh, he's also got, he's got some IQ about him. He's, he's, got, he's got the nous, the football nous. He can do things and bounce the ball and um, get his angles in ways that not many can. Uh, but having said that, not everyone has Jack in our best 22. So it's it's a case of he was one of a few players fighting for one position potentially. So 
that's that. What about you? What What do you think now that we've had some time to process Jack and you know his inability to play this season? Like, where does your mind go to straight away? Who is the first player that you think? Yep, he's the one that's going to take the opportunity, and he's the one that's going to fill the uh, the hole and and get some more game time than what he otherwise would. I'd be interested to hear what you have to say or read what you have to say. Let me know in the comments below. We'll chat there. Go Blues.